is this. Although on the screen it looks different. <laughs> the three angels and Armageddon. Okay. Now, what happens now? Go straight to the first slide. Okay. I looked. And lo, a lamb stood on, the, on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Okay? Go to the next one. Now, it says, These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins, it says. These are they which follow the lamb with, whithersoever he goeth. Okay? Whatever Jesus does, and wherever Jesus leads them, they'll follow. No questions asked. Okay? These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So these are the people that were the offering at the beginning, the truest, the best of your fruits, the first fruits, the best people that you could find. And these are in Revelation. So they were doing Revelation 14, 15, 16, and 20. So Okay, in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. These people have done nothing wrong. The first fruits, the best of the people that there are. Okay, go to the next one. Now what the sermon's on today. Okay, the three angels and their very important message. Go to the next one. Okay. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So the first angel does what? He gives the everlasting gospel to everyone on the earth. Everyone gets a chance. Every single nation, it says, and kindred and tongue and people. So if there's any racists that use the cross like, KKK or, or, or those other people that try and steal Christianity and try and make it for themselves. Where, yeah, we're there, yeah, and burning a cross. If you're burning a cross, you're not a Christian, are you? <laughs> okay. It says to every nation, to everyone. Okay. So this angel is trying to help. This is angel number one. Okay. Go to the next one. Okay, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. Stop what you're doing. Stop. For the hour of his judgment has come. You're out of time. All the stuff you're doing, all the evil that you're doing, now, stop it now. Come back to God. Worship him that made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the fountains and the waters. Stop this worship of the beast. Stop all these things you're doing. This is it. So do they want to listen to this angel? Some do, some don't. Let's see angel number two. Then there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink the wine of the wrath of the fornication. Okay? Now, what is it saying? It's saying that this place, this power structure, it convinced everyone to incur the wrath of God. Okay, it convinced everyone to worship something other than God. That's why the first angel, it was the message that they were trying to do. It was the message that they were trying to prevent. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, a final warning. If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is scarily poured out without mixture. I'm not, yeah, go on. If any man, yeah, okay. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. Okay, the people that fought against Jesus will be tortured in front of him. 
Now, the things that they're going to do are pretty serious. But remember when God said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. This is what he's going to do for his son. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and forever, and they have no need rest day and night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. A final warning from the third angel. Now we see where this is going to go. Here is the what? Patience of the saints. The patience. Here are they that do what? They keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Does that mean that that's what the devil's after? Yeah. Help her out. Okay. Morning, sister. Okay. Here is the patience of the saints. Okay. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, says the Spirit. Okay. So we've got a second person agreeing with the first voice, the Spirit of God. Okay. That they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Their works. Okay. So it's saying that we're going to be at risk. Go to the next one. I looked and behold a white cloud. Now we know who it's talking about here. And upon the cloud one sat un unto, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. It's time now. The hour has come. There is going to be no more chances after this. The time's now. Okay? The hour of judgment. The final part. Another angel came out of the altar which had power over fire. He cried with a loud cry at him. So he's talking to Jesus and saying, because Jesus is the one with a sharp sickle, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. The good people that were going to be good are still are going to be good. The evil people are not going to change. This is what's happened. Okay? Um... The angel thrust into his sickle into the earth, gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. So we've got a second angel with a sickle as well. It's time. Now this is a pretty scary part. But it's a part that needs to be told. The winepress was trodden without the sea. Outside of the city of the beast, okay, the winepress, the people were killed, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, up to the length of the horse's nose. Do you know how much blood that will be, considering blood goes outwards? It's a liquid. How many people have just been killed? Even unto the horse bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, three hundred and twenty kilometers. Of blood that's about what six foot high. Now, outside of the city, this is this is this is across the earth. How many people have just been killed? Billions, probably, at this time. Okay, they had their chance. They had their chance. I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the last seven, uh, the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. Now, 
I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mixed with fire. And then that had gotten the victory over the beast. Very interesting. Not everyone follows this beast. There is still a remnant here. Okay? Over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. That's, uh, that's it. They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvellous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Okay? Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all the nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. The things you said were going to happen, Lord, happen. How right are you? You're the only one that's holy. So these people here, uh, they're recognizing the holiness of God. Now the Bible says something, and this is one of the main cruxes of today. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. But no man was able to enter into the temple until what? Yeah, until the... Yeah. What is God saying? I can't give you this new kingdom yet. This new heavenly kingdom yet. Do you know why? Because no justice has been done yet. Now, somebody said something, they were watching a film, and they said to me, when does the bad guy get what's coming to him? I can't watch anymore. I can't watch it. Yes, it was you. Okay. Justice has to happen first. God's saying that justice has to happen first. Okay. I've got to put everything right on earth before. Just like you have to repent to get forgiveness. Okay. These people who won't repent have to be gotten out of the way. You can't go around killing Christians anymore. You can't go around doing sorceries and black magic and all these other things that they're going to be doing. This has to be put right. Then you can enter the kingdom of God. So let's put this right. Let's see how God puts this right. I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways. Pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now, you're going to read some things here, but, uh, you know, <laughs> the scary things. My job isn't to say nice things. My job is to tell you what's going to happen, good or bad. Luckily for us, it's very, very good. Okay. So, God is a God of justice, and this has to happen first before the good things are given to us. And the first went, poured out his vial upon the earth. There fell a noisome and greasome, uh, grievous sore upon the men, which had the mark of the beast upon him that worshipped the image. We'll go quickly through this one. Okay. So, the second angel pours his vial upon the sea. Okay, every living soul died in the sea. Okay, the third angel poured out his vial. Rivers of fountain, they became blood. Go to the next one. And the fifth angel says what? The angel of the waters, sorry, uh, not the fifth angel. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which as, uh, are and was and shall be, because you have judged thus. You've done this. You brought justice. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. Thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. But they are worthy. They deserve it. But you see, bad people, when they get away with something, it hurts us. Because we have that image. We're made in the image of God. We have that same thing in us. We demand justice. We want justice. It's not a bad thing. And things have to be put right. Okay? The fourth angel upon the sun. Okay? 
What are the people doing? They're blaspheming the name of God, which had power over these plagues. Okay? So instead of coming to God, who's got power over the plagues, what we can do is, the smart people here are blaspheming him. Because that's going to get God on our side. Okay? They repented not. So these people were never going to change. You can pour vial after vial after vial of wrath on these people. They were never going to go right. You will meet people like this in your life. Maybe it's a, a partner you get. Maybe it's someone else in your life. They're just evil because they want to be evil. They're never going to repent. You might wait. You might think it's something you said, you've done, or something like this. Maybe if I said it differently, maybe if I did. There are some people who will never repent. These are those types of people. Okay, now we've got the fifth angel. Okay. Now, if you're the beast and you've seen all these things happen to you, and all the people following you have seen all these things happen to you, do you think maybe they, 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 they think maybe we should come to God? Maybe we should, you know, maybe we're on the wrong side. No. Okay, they repented not of their deeds. Go to the next one. Now, this is the sixth angel. The white and uh, he poured that his vial on the river Euphrates and the water was dried up. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay. I saw three unclean spirits. Now don't forget the kings are supporting the beast. Remember we did this last week. So he doesn't want to lose control over them. So he see he sends three unclean spirits come out of the mouth of the dragon, Satan, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of the God Almighty. So we're coming up to the final battle. Okay? So instead of repenting to come to God, they still believe they're powerful enough to overcome God. I mean, if you did, the science that's available today shows what we are. A tiny little dot in a galaxy, and there are billions of galaxies. And apparently, these people can attack God in their mind. I've seen, I have done many, how do I say, dumb things in my life. And I've seen, I've met a lot of less than intelligent people. But to do this tells me something about these people that cannot be, how? They cannot see that they're going against God. I do not understand. And these people that are out there in this world now, that decide that they're Satan worshippers and they decide that they want to do these black magic things and that makes them somehow they can overcome the power of God. Who do these people think they are? I mean, I... <laughs> all right, it, we'll move on. Behold, I come as a thief. This is very important for later. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments. Now, keep yourself clean. Your white garments, when you, uh, when Jesus washed your, uh, washes your garments clean, he wipes away your sins, you keep them clean. They lest they walk around naked and they see his shame. Okay? Now you've heard of this place probably in fields and stuff like that. It's called Armageddon. Okay? Or Megiddo in the Hebrew tongue. Okay? And he gathered them together into a place called, called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Yes. This is the final battle, or one of them, as you'll see after. Okay? Get them to give it a place called the Hebrew Town. Okay. I'll tell you a bit more about Armageddon as we go on. The seventh angel pours out as well. This is the final vial of the wrath of God. Okay? There came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It's done. The wrath of God 
has come, which is in his name. And there fell upon men the great hail out of heaven, and every stone about the weight of a talent. It's about, you know, that big. Okay? Uh, a foot big is falling. A rock that big would fall on you. Okay? A great hail. And they what, did what? So this is the seventh time now, seventh chance to get right with God. They blasphemed God at the plague of hell. The plague thereof was exceedingly great. Now, if you're blaspheming God, do you know that there's a God? You know. <laughs> you know who sent the plague. Okay? You know who can stop the plague. Does, does it, does your brain let you do this? Not for these people, for us, yes. For these people, no, 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 no. Well, do you think if God sent another seven, they might change? There is no change. If these people just stay, oh, I mean, they want to be against God. That's their thing. That's what I'm into. You know, that's what they want to do. That's their thing. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Now after these I saw another angel come out from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Okay? He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. It's become the habitation, it's where devils live, the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, so this is how evil Babylon is. Every single type of demonic thing, they're doing it here. Uh, what was it they called their telescope? Lucifer. Yeah, they called their telescope Lucifer. I mean, there's no, it's just full of blasphemies, this place. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Everything. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, for all nations have uh, drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Okay? The wrath of God, they brought it on themselves. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Okay? So all around the world, everybody's going to get involved. All the leaders from around the world. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of their delicacy. So, if you join me, the beast says, I'll make you rich. You know, this super, you know, imagine you're in charge of, say, all the pastor in the world or something like that. You know, you make a deal with him and you're in charge of the whole world of it. Now, this is for everything. These people sold themselves out. They sold their souls out for money. They sold God out for money. The next one. Okay, come out of her, my people. Are there people still on the earth that are loyal to Egypt? Who is God talking to? He's talking to his loyal remnant. We haven't skipped this. We're still here so far. Those that are still alive. Come out of her and be not partakers of her sins. And that ye uh, receive not of her plagues. Okay? Go to the next one. Now, this is actually true. This guy is giving away a sports car. I call him a guy because he's nothing special. Okay? Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, uh, uh, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled to her, double. The cup of abominations. Punish her, God. Punish her for all the things she's done to you. Okay? To all the saints that, that had to suffer because of this. Okay? Now, this is the uh, Pope giving away a car, a sports car. Paid for by the church funds. What's he doing with a sports car, Lamborghini? This is an actual event. This actually happened. What was he doing with that car in the first place? Have we run out of hungry people? 
Instead of buying the car and then giving it to charity, why not give the money you spent on the car to the charity? Cut out the middleman and the commission. And the publicity of sitting there doing this, look, cameras, get the cameras. But the cameras didn't catch you doing something good. They caught you doing something evil. Okay? How much has she glorified herself? Look at the throne. He sits on a throne. You know, well, you know, if anyone wants to buy me a throne in here. <laughs> a oh, nice chair. Yeah, really, <laughs> nice chair would do me, you know. I don't need this. I don't need this nice chair. <laughs> How can you call yourself the Holy Father? Doesn't this make us angry? How dare you call yourself, and the supreme goody woody, whatever he called himself, pontiff, the supreme pontiff of pontiffs of Christians. And Christians don't speak like this. Christians don't act like this. If it, I remember some guy tried to kiss my hand. I just said, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like you. They do the same thing in Revelation. So John, John sees this beast and he falls down to worship and he goes, see that thou doest not. Now if that's Paul, the apostles didn't speak like this. They would never call themselves the Holy Father. They would never call themselves on the supreme person of all. They would never speak like this. Paul said the words that touch my heart. I am the least of the apostles, he said. Not even fit to be called the apostle. This is how Christians speak. This is our apostles. This is how real, real Christians should be. Not like this. <laughs> this is a bad joke. You know, this is a... Okay. So how, how much have you glorified yourself and lived deliciously? So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and I shall see no sorrow. Is he sitting like a queen? Yeah. I'm no, you know, I won't see it. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. I won't see any sorrow. Oh, really? <laughs> right. Let's see how that works out for him. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. No Christians are going to come. No, you won't hear about real Christianity anymore. Okay? And Jesus himself, the bridegroom and the bride, okay? They're not coming to you anymore. You've run out of chances. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Let's go on. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, Okay. This is the place. Okay. It's called Megiddo. When we get the name Armageddon. Okay. It's actually, you can actually visit, it's actually a tourist attraction. Come and see Armageddon. <laughs> I'm not joking. Anyone, <laughs> anyone can go here that they want. Right, I'm thinking of going. Is this the final battle? Yeah. Okay. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. All, you know, really intelligent people that are trying to fight God. Gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Jesus on the horse. We did this before. Okay. So, this is the spot. God even said that this is the spot. Called in the Hebrew tongue. When we're doing that. Okay, go to the next one. Now the beast was taken predictably. And with him the false prophet, that's two of them. Who's missing? Satan. We'll explain 
because there's an unholy trinity the way they've done it it's like a, to make a mockery of god this is what he's done the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and then that worshipped the image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone and the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse which a sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls uh, were filled with their flesh you see jesus is nice 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 yes he's not soft you have to deal with that phone whoever's got that phone Okay. We'll go to the next one. Okay. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a chain in his hand. Now this is what happens to Satan. Satan is separate from the beast and the false prophet. Okay. He laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is called the devil and bound him a thousand years now one of the reasons I'm, pre I'm preaching on revelation because i've had a lot of questions and a lot of people think the antichrist is this and that i've heard some very strange uh, <laughs> ideas about what the mark of the beast is and stuff like that so i'm, I'm putting it straight with a sermon okay uh, so he's bound him a thousand years okay now when, what is this thousand years okay to, to, to know this, we have to go to separate parts of the Bible where it's easily described. Now, this is Psalms. He says, for a thousand years, don't, don't forget, we're going to live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Those that will get beheaded, whatever, they, raise, they, they reign with Christ a thousand years. Okay? But Satan's locked up for a thousand years. The day of the Lord is one day. So how are people figuring this out? Well, it's very easy, and the Bible explains. For a thousand years in thy sight, but as yesterday when it passed and as a watch in the night but as the day of the lord this is peter will come as a thief in the night watch in the night thief in the night a thousand years is like that a day of the lord for one day as with the lord is like a thousand years okay so he's talking about revelation peter here in case people are wondering in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works therein shall be burnt up. So a thousand years with the Lord is like a day, and Satan is bound for a thousand years. Satan gets taken out of the battle and bound. And those that were killed beheaded for the witness of Christ. Go to the next one. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions on this, so stop me and ask me. I don't mind today. Okay? So he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. Now this part confuses a lot of Christians. They think, well, as a thousand years pass, do we wait a thousand more years while saying that? It's not. Go to the next one, I'll explain. Okay. I saw thrones and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw what? The, the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Okay. These are the people that are going to live and reign in Christ a thousand years. So their time on earth gets shortened because they were loyal to God. But Jesus makes that up to them by spending a thousand years with him. They, they get longer life with Jesus, a longer time, okay? Which had not worshipped the beast image, yeah, 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 and not received the mark of the words, okay? They lived the moment with Christ a thousand years. So is that an actual thousand years to us, or is it a thousand years in heaven? Go on. All right, the mark represents this guy's name. So the Antichrist is so vain that he will not, not only wants you to worship an image of him, he also wants you to worship his name. 
and you've got to put his name inside your forehead or right hand. Now, are they saying it's the RFNID chip, where you have to go to work if you've got this ID chip? I don't know. It's not a tattoo. It says it's inside your body. The only way is to put it inside. Now, the technology exists today to put something inside you. It didn't back then. So the Bible is seeing something that's going to happen. <laughs> Wait. So, and it's a voluntary thing. People say, you know, you're forcing this vaccine. That must be the mark of the beast. No, it isn't. They're saying voluntary. People will choose to worship the beast. Okay? You won't be able to buy or sell. You could face starvation. So what this thing is, it's a choice to you to take the mark or not. Don't take it. Whatever it is, don't take it. No, this thing is a deliberate worship of his name. The thing that you will put inside you is his name. You'll be worshipping his name. And that's what the Bible says. We did that last week, but I don't mind saying it again. It's easy. Okay? Neither had received his mark. Okay? So last, last time it said uh, the mark represents his name, that he who has wisdom. 600, 666. It's not 666. It's, yeah. 666. Okay? All together. Okay, now we said that we speculated the name might be Solomon because that's the only time that number appears again in the Bible. So if the Antichrist name Solomon, they go, oh, yeah, Mary, you were right. It's the serial number of one of the vaccines. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, uh, next one. Okay, so this really explains the thousand years thing here. Okay, twice in the Bible, uh, the thousand years says as a day. Are they talking about Revelation? Yes. Okay. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So when you're up with Christ, it's for the day. In heaven, it counts as a thousand years. So this is, this is when they're saying, they'll live and reign with Christ a thousand years. You've got one day with Christ, which is, you know, obviously that's how it lasts. So Peter's talking about Revelation 20 here, in this verse. The next one, looking for and hasting unto the coming day of the Lord. So is Peter talking about revelation? Yes, the coming day of the Lord. It's predicted throughout all the prophets. Okay, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Remember what it says, that they will all be burnt up. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Again, he's talking about revelation 20 Peter here. Okay. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Peter is talking about Revelation 21. Remember it says, a new, I beheld a new heaven and a new earth. But time works differently in heaven. It does. A, a day with the Lord, being with Jesus for one day is like being with him a thousand years. That's how the Bible describes it. And I'd imagine it's that amazing. You're confined. I mean, if you wanted to get a bus and go somewhere, that's not the same how it works in heaven. You'll just be there. You would, uh, you could do see all these things. I mean, I, I haven't been there myself, but I can only imagine without bodies, without uh, you know, this is what it's like. You'll be as the angels of heaven. It says. Okay, so does everyone get the thousand year thing? I think we've better board the point. Okay, go on. <laughs> okay. The rest of the dead live not and again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So those that were beheaded are part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Again it says. Next one. Now. 
the part where Satan's let loose, after that day, it's time for Satan to be judged. There is another battle apart from Armageddon. This says it's in the Holy City. Okay, so let's, let's explain that. Sorry? Sorry? Ah, yeah, you're reading it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when the thousand years are expired, sh uh, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. After that day, okay, Satan's let loose. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Okay. Gog, Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So you're seriously outnumbered in this battle. Okay, this is uh, people on earth thinking they can beat the army of heaven. Right? Let's the next one. I know, dumb, isn't it? Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to think of another more Christian word to use, but I can't think of one. Okay. They went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed what? So Armageddon was one place. This is a different place. The beloved city is talking about. Now, who, what, what is the beloved city? Go on, someone have a guess. Zion? Yes, well done. Gold star for my sister. Yeah, okay. Um, yes, Jerusalem, the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So there's another battle. The devil that deceived him, now it's Satan's time, was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. You wanted an unholy trinity. Satan, go and join him. Yeah. Where the beast of her. Finally. And it shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Well, I think he's earned it. Definitely earned it. Okay. So, there's a fight in Jerusalem. There's a fight in the place called Armageddon. This is the word of God. If God says it's going to be like this, it will be exactly like this. When it happens, we know. Oh, yeah, we read it in Revelation. You know, we, we you know. Okay. And I saw, go to the next one. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. This is how powerful this person is on the great white throne. And there was found no place for them. You see, before there can be a new heaven and an earth, you've got to get rid of the old corrupt one. There's no place for the beast, his false prophet, his followers, those people that want to sell out God and blaspheme God no matter what and do sorcery. There's no place for you. There's no room at the party. There's nothing. How, how's it saying for them? It's found no place for them. Basically, these are worthless people. They're worthless. They're not worth having. There's found no place for them. Then I saw the dead, great and small, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books. Now this is a scary words. Why is it scary? Why are you so scared, Mario? Well, I'm scared for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, 50 50. I was it? It's time to get right with God, isn't it? Shouldn't we put our work straight? If we're going to be judged according to our work, this is scary. Am I doing enough for Jesus? Am I, you know, are my works righteous before God? Now, I may be a preacher, maybe a, a are my works righteous before God? It doesn't matter what I call myself. Supreme, you know, some of those names. I call myself, so what is his works before God? What do you think is going to happen when God sees his works? He's not going to be happy. Let's go to the next one. The sea gave up her dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So the people in hell are going to be judged as well. Again. <laughs> okay. Second death. 
You've got two lots to look forward to if you're in war. Okay? okay, they were judged again, every man, according to his works. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. They're worthless now. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We tried, we gave you a chance, we sent every, we sent prophets, we sent, we did everything. I did everything I could, God say, not me. I did everything I could possibly do for thousands of years. And the people that were evil would be evil still. <laughs> You know, I, there's no more chances that I could have given. I couldn't have made it any easier. I sent an angel preaching my gospel everywhere. But at that point, there's no place for your evil people. I'm going to make something special for the people that did deserve it. Because these other people didn't. This is part of Peter was talking about. I saw a new heaven and earth. Remember, the judgment has to happen first. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. No sea. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. It's good news. There shall be no more death. We get sad when people die, but that's not going to happen anymore. Nor sorrow, because there's no evil. Evil causes sorrow. When the evil people that cause sorrow are gone, there's nothing else to cry about. No one else can be nasty to you. Those people are gone. Neither shall be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. God judged and got rid of them. Amen. I'm very happy about it. Amen. I'm very happy as well. Better to the next one. I have to get rid of the old stuff before you make something new. Amen. So here we go. And he sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true. Faithful. You can believe what I'm telling you. It comes from God. If Mario says something, don't listen. If God says something, if I'm talking the words of God, then listen. Okay? It is done. He said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It starts and ends with me, God says. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of the Greek alphabet. These have come from the Greek scriptures. The beginning and the end. I will give to him that is a thirst. Do you want God? Yes. Okay. A thirst. Someone who's thirsty for God. Someone who wants eternal life. Not someone like... Uh, you know, wants to throw away his inheritance. A story with Esau. Okay? He's a thirst. He wants me. He's hungry for me. He's thirsty for this knowledge of God. I will give him of the uh, founding of the water of life freely. There isn't going to be much that God wants from you. To ask someone to repent isn't a big ask. <laughs> it's not much to ask. You could summon the whole Bible up in repent and believe, if you wanted. What's that? Three words. Read the other 365,000 words in it. But remember those three, repent and believe. Okay? Let's go to the next one. And we thank you for, you know, being with us this long. We're coming to the end of the service now. It says, he that overcoming shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's, that's quite an offer. <laughs> that's, there's a condition of it. An overcomer. They call them on the internet overcomers. Okay, the people that have survived what's going to happen. The people that have overcome the temptations in life, that have stayed, they've kept the faith through all types of things. It's a great, great.
great offer Christianity. Okay, now. Go to, uh, oh, you don't have to go to the next one. It just says, uh, <laughs> it's just the contact details. We, if I go back one and talk about it, in your life, you're going to have a lot of temptation. You're going to have temptation to turn your back on God. Now, if the devil can't get you one way, he'll try to get you through other people. He'll try and send, like he did to Jesus, he ups the temptation from bread to the kingdoms of heaven. You said, what would it take for you to sell out God? I'll give you all these things that already belong to you. Okay? Yeah, but <laughs> they can't refuse, which is actually nothing that they already own. The devil can't give you anything except lies, deceit. Sometimes people in your life will give you lies and deceit. Sometimes they'll look like uh, a lamb, but they'll actually be a dragon. They will look like Jesus, sound like Jesus. Sorry, I won't sound like Jesus. They will look, they will come like Christians, but they will actually be speaking like Satan. Okay? They will try and convince you to go against the word of God. There will be other people in your life, friends, special friends that are jealous of your life. On our best day, we weren't worthy of you. But you were patient, you had, you were long suffering. You forgave our sins when we repented. Lord, what you're offering us is nothing we could ever earn. We will try and do the best we can to reflect some of that light that you shine down on us onto the world. We hope one day that you can be proud of us, that we do something and be worthy servants in your eyes. What a great thing that God might be proud of us one day, that we might be holy in some way, like he is holy. We are the only one that is holy, Lord. Let us remember that we were created by you. Let us remember that without you, we wouldn't live. So we remember these things and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may this always be the case. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and don't be shy to send us messages asking questions.